I really believe in marriage. And, but what's happened is we've elevated marriage oftentimes over the woman's life. And so we've put women's lives at My risk. My father, very popular guy, uh, well-liked, uh, on the outside looked very good to the community, uh, could do good deeds. Um, but when married to my mother, was violent. Domestic violence is right in the church, right with divorce and everything. God else. can deliver. God does deliver. God can take it right now, once and for all. However, we have to walk it out. Most of the time, God will put us... There's a need in the church to address the issue of domestic violence. I think it's been a, a hidden sin, so to speak. But there's a problem. I mean, I've been in the pastoral business long enough to know there is a problem in the church with physical abuse, emotional abuse, um, verbal abuse, and I think we need to address it. We need to hit, it, hit the thing right up. I think domestic violence is men's work. I think the social problem that we have in this country and around the world is men's use of violence towards women and men's use of violence. Watching a man come into class like this, physically hard, in denial, angry, very, very angry, and over a period of weeks and months, sort of watching him unfold, seeing some humility come, hearing him talk about his feelings, seeing, um, seeing the brokenness, um, seeing him wanting to, to make things right with those in his life that he's hurt, and, uh, and then seeing actual joy come into his life, that's, that's awesome. Where does this come from, this, this head of house, leader, one who calls the shots? I mean, where do we... My wife is, is one who says, to help me, exposes who I am. And I am not like that. I'm not like being exposed. I have the men's program is just part of the work of the Domestic Abuse Project. It really is trying to bring all the different agencies or organizations in that could provide safety mm -hmm. uh, for, for women, for battered women and children and accountability and opportunities for change uh, for offenders. And so the DAIP, you know, it had um, a Native American men's class, for instance, right from the beginning because it recognized that there were some unique cultural uh, bonds uh, with the Native men. You know, I worked, you know, doing classes and running a men's program there for, for 15 years and to talk about Christianity or to talk about a class for Christian men was like taboo. I mean, it was like somehow that was different. Somehow that was religion. We know, Lord, it says in your word that uh, we're to renew our minds and take every thought captive. And we know, Lord, that our problem is our thinking. That our problem. The model that the Domestic Abuse Intervention Project uses for these court ordered classes is a man and a woman together um, doing the classes, if at all possible, because they want to uh, model a partnership. A, a team, a team effort, and they want the men in class to be able to relate to a woman. So for me, it is really aligning myself with Barbara. You know, submitting one to another. You know, it's sharing the leadership, and that that's okay. So we partner with the DAIP. Um, if a man um, is arrested for violence, he can he can go to jail, or he can go to the class. If he if he chooses to go through the DAIP classes, he goes to an intake. And the intake is a couple hours long, there's a fee, he pays that, and he fills out the paperwork, he hears about the class, the class is 27 weeks long, or class as. They meet once a week, he could, uh, that particular man who's in intake, he can choose any number of classes, but there's only one class that's with the Christian perspective. Now we have, I would say, over 50% are volunteers, and they are men mostly who have not used physical violence. They've heard about the class, they've seen the changes in their friends' lives, and they want to be in it. They ask to be in it. The same rules apply. They go through intake. They, um, they pay the same fee, fees, um, fill out the same paperwork, and uh, it's phenomenal. Mm. We've, we've never seen anything like this before. Um, but they're men who want change in their lives, in their personal lives. My dad is a pretty controlling guy, angry, a lot. Growing up, I remember thinking, I don't want to ever be like my dad. I don't want to be like that in my relationships. But yet, I ended up 
had a lot of the same controlling issues, a lot of the same anger issues. And my dad was pretty extreme. And I wasn't to the extreme of my father, but yet it was enough that it was damaging my relationship with Bonnie and with my two stepsons. This is stuff that I have to change. It was me. I'm pointing at her all the time, and it was me. The class is for the individual. The class is for their right. transformation, their change. We set up a safe and hopefully liberating environment uh, for men to explore the issues in their lives, their personal issues. Mm -hmm. Restoration in the marriage doesn't always happen. It's, it's not our goal. I mean, it's not our primary goal. The primary goal is to end violence. The primary goal is to end abusive mm -hmm. behavior. The primary goal, you know, is to equip uh, men to be all they can be in Christ and to be able to love the women in their lives the way Christ wants them to love them. Mm -hmm. You know, when we first got married, Bonnie, I told her at one time, I said, you know, I never had issues till I married you. Till I married me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just I had never had anybody, I had nobody to be accountable to. And, or to point out, you have these issues. Because there was a public me and the, 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 pub, the private me. And the public me, everybody knew, you know, me as this patient, kind, gentle person. But, everybody loved him. But in my home, mm -hmm. I wasn't that way. I, I had this hope that he would um, be somebody that he wasn't. Uh, on the outside, he was this wonderful teacher dealing with kids, and, and sometimes it would create um, almost jealousy for me because he would honor those students so much and yet he didn't with our own children. I did not feel like he valued what I had to say. He interrupted constantly. Um, there was just a sense that uh, if I would just do things his way, everything would be fine. We used the power and control wheel. The power and control wheel identifies different forms of violence that men use, and it was developed by battered women in Duluth in the early 80s. What we want to see happen is when men come through class, we want them to be able to identify their own use of emotional or physical violence, any of these things that are on the wheel. We want them to be able to recognize it and um, own it, say that this is theirs, not blame her or the other people in their lives, and then start to work on that. She was curled up on the bed, just crying. And I, I looked at her, I still see her. And I saw her crying and I said, I began to weep myself. I said, why do I keep doing this? And I knew something was different. And I, at that point I realized I was losing her. And she had been encouraging me to go to this class. And I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll work on my this stuff, but it may not look like what you, exp you think it's going to. But when I saw her there crying and I just said, you know, I will go to this class and I'll do whatever it takes to make things and that's where it started. And that was, it'll be three years this coming February that I, I start attending the class. We believe that if a person enters into that process of really understanding, to, to having remorse, repenting of, of, of their sin, uh, paying full restitution, which is, you know, or doing mm -hmm. restitution, um, which is, uh, restoring her name in the community, which is uh, going to the class and working hard and being honest and being accountable and being transparent. And she was helping me, but I didn't like it because it was exposing stuff in me that I didn't like to look at. And I had a hard time thinking that I was wrong. For men to come in and say, you see a woman sitting there, to put yourself in that place of being vulnerable yourself. Because here you are, you're a man talking about how you've treated other women to a woman, and not just another guy. I've seen him 
be transformed, you know, from this person who was agitated all the time into somebody who I just enjoy being with, laughing with. Um, I can be gut level honest with him and know he's not going to chomp my head off because it's not what he wants to hear. The scripture says, speak the truth in love. And when you have an atmosphere that's full of trust and respect, you can speak truth into people's lives. So they see Ty and I together. Um, we're husband and wife, but they see us partnering together, and that's a good thing because it gives them hope mm -hmm. in their own lives. Mm -hmm. I, I go to the find out about this class, and I hear they said 27 weeks. My head, I'm doing the math, and my head, I'm going, oh my gosh, that's seven months. Seven months. I just got off a two-year master's degree, and um, the first night I go, we have homework. I'm like, I have homework too, you know. And I thought seven months, but when seven months was done, it wasn't enough. And I'm still going. I, I love it. It's it's a highlight of my week to go to this group um, because one thing, the accountability is good and it's real. And and uh, I still glean things from the group every time I go. And I hearing other men's stories and the things that they're going through or have gone through. I saw her more as an enemy. Yeah. Right. And so I hurt her. Yeah. And it's taken a long time to own that. Right. It's the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it's taken a lot of work to, to repair in my own life, thinking of her as she would expose stuff that, that the Lord was using her to expose. <laughs> I love your honesty. Yeah, it's just so true, though. Yeah. Repentance, you know, as we know, is 180 degree different change behavior, but it's changed thinking. So one of the goals that we have, a primary goal, is that they change their thinking. We use the scriptures and we use the, the curriculum from the DAIP to facilitate that process. And hopefully, you know, in this journey of repentance, changing your thinking, and a journey of restitution, which means doing whatever it takes mm -hmm. to rebuild trust with her if he's still in a relationship with her. You know, although there are so many men in the class that are having significant positive changes in their lives, we would never want battered women to think that simply because their partner is in the class that it's a panacea for all their relationship issues. So we've come a long way. Not that we're still married or anything like that. Uh, that's not going to happen, you know. She, but um, there's been a lot of healing. Right. I cannot do this myself. I tried the controlling of my anger. It didn't work. And so... I would begin to put to practice the things that I was learning in the class. I'd come home and I'd have to practice the everything. You know, as a child, I grew up witnessing domestic violence from my father to my mother. I grew up being quite afraid. I know what it was like to see the face of the person that I was harming when I was harming her, to see my mother's face when my father was being abusive to her. I don't want women to be harmed. I don't want children to have to grow up like I grew up. And God is saying, you've gone through a lot. I've taken you through a lot. And I've restored you. And I'm healing you. And I want you to use that now, you know, to be a comfort and an aid and a guide mm -hmm. to others. And so I believe that's what the call is. And the call is unique in that Barbara and I, I have the, the, the awesome privilege you know, that God has given me Barbara and that we get to do this together. I believe that God puts dreams inside of us, you know, that we are to walk into. It's our destiny, our gifts and our calling. And as his wife and as his, I'm, I'm his biggest support person. That's what I'm called to do. And that's what Ty's called to do for me. Absolutely. Is to see me become everything right. God has called me to be in life. This class gave me hope. You know, I, I began to see that, yeah, things can change, things can get better. And I came to the realization that God's bigger than all of this. That nothing is too small. He knows what's going on. I know there's hope. When they're in despair, I can say, uh-uh. No, there's hope. There's much opportunity here. It can be done. It will be done if you don't give up. You know, don't grow weary in doing good. In due season you shall reap a harvest. I love that verse, you know. But, it, uh, you know, another verse is we need to confess our sins to one another 
and be healed. There has to be accountability. We have to be transparent. We have to name it. We have to talk about it. That's part of it. That's part of being able to renew our minds. Mm -hmm. We've been married 12 years and, and, mm -hmm. and our, our relationship continues to improve and, and to know what real intimacy is where you, you can be real with somebody and trust them and know that they accept you and value you for who you are. When you integrate learning, behavior change, repentance, faith, you do so in the context of a community that's open and honest about what's really going on. Um, there's a great deal of health that is unleashed. I think that's where the presence of God works the best, is in community and in honesty. I believe that God is doing something wonderful. I really do. Um, they offer a class that can transform men. It can transform families. I see that. I know that. I recognize that. I believe that what's going on in here could benefit the church community, you know, right across America. I really do. They have a message for the wider body of Christ.